Hey guys, welcome to a special edition of the brand new Backswing Podcast. Um, we decided because the Chiefs are in the Super Bowl that we wanted to go ahead and, and do a dry run here and give this thing a go and just kind of give our take on the Super Bowl just to have something to, to remember it by. Um, we'll put this out. It'll be after the game, so our predictions really won't mean much, but um, uh, hopefully it's something that you guys will enjoy. We know we'll enjoy looking back and laughing at ourselves later. Hopefully our predictions go Chiefs. Yeah, there we go. It'll be good. Big day. Um, so uh have got a couple things we wanted to get to here, but the first thing we need to do is get our Chiefs Kingdom Mail. I'm going to hold this right up to the mic here and get the old first beer of the Super Bowl Sunday on camera. Cheers. Here we go. Mm. Oh, that's cold. That's that's <laughs> yeah, satisfying. Um, so we wanted to start and just kind of get into a couple things about the Super Bowl. Obviously, um, you know, every pundit out there is breaking down the game. So why not us too? So um, what I wanted to start with is just kind of get your feedback on a couple things. See where you think the game's going to go. What are three things you think the Chiefs need to do today, Neil? To to come home victorious so first and foremost i think it's going to come down to the line i think the two lines i think offensive line everybody's talked about how the pass rush for the 49ers is incredible and it's i think it's cut dry you know if they protect patrick mahomes then i think that they've got the perfect shot. See, I, I tend long. to think that protecting, I hear a lot of people talk about protecting Patrick Mahomes, but I tend to think that stat is a little bit overrated. They've done a very good job in the second half of the year. Once the line has gotten healthy, it was kind of sketchy um, early, but the other reason it was sketchy early is because Pat wasn't mobile. He had a bum he ankle. You're right. And so once he's had a healthy ankle and kneecaps, coincidentally, yeah, yeah. Um, both of those important things, he's moved around so well that I feel like protection He's able to read the pocket, and those guys don't have to do anything super special. They don't have to build a wall. All they got to do is direct people deep in the pocket, let Pat step up, and then if he needs to sidestep to get away, he does it. That is very accurate. I uh, wouldn't downplay any of that, but I still believe, you know, that's all we've heard about all, well, I guess now two weeks, is the Niners pass rush, Niners defense, the Niners pass rush, the Niners defense, and I think that there's not a way to talk about the Super Bowl without talking about what everybody has talked about all week or the last two yeah, weeks. Yeah, I mean, there's a reason so that, that's they're the, talking about it. Yeah, right. absolutely. So um, that's is that one of your three reasons, or is offensive and defensive line like reason one and reason two? It's 1A and 1B. I think that goes hand in hand. I and gotcha. I think we're on the same page with get to 30 points. I think that's reason two right there is – I think 30 so, points in the Super Bowl. So is... one of my reasons is 35. I've got mm -hmm. my number a little higher. I think if it's 30 points, there's still a little bit of wiggle room there. I think if we get to 35, it's because we we're up two scores on them, and and you know we've been cruising. So I'll get into that my uh, score prediction a lot later. But I think 30 is been the baseline with the Chiefs for the last I think almost two years now yeah once no, you hit, once you hit 30 true. points everything changes with once the they Chiefs. once they hit 30 points I mean they score more points and losses mm -hmm. than they do in most of their wins so yeah it's definitely something that um you're you're definitely in the right direction there I think if they score 30 they're obviously in it mm -hmm. um I just uh, 35 is my safe number you know I got a safe word it's gonna be 35 yeah, right right um it's and 15 a, you know, it's, a, it's my home. Right. Yeah. Yes. Um, what's what's your last point? I think uh, first quarter. I think the whole <laughs> don't don't cough it up early. Right. That's, I think, uh, <laughs> that's a pretty you good don't, one. You don't although need... although they've shown that they have the ability yeah. to overcome the <coughs> you know. Right. Start. Well, I think at some so, point you know Lady Luck's gonna gonna leave you on that. Don't and, tempt Lady Luck. Right. Don't start slow. Yeah. No. I I. I think everyone out there agrees that you just look at it and be like, if this Chiefs offense mm -hmm. doesn't have to come from behind and just plays their game and doesn't get off to a slow start, and then they, they can just get off like the gazelle we think they're going to be and be off and And gone. they don't need, you know, a perfect start. They, no. They, they could be down a touchdown after the first quarter. 10-3 or 14-7 or, you know, tie game, just in it. Not, not the uh, disaster that was the first two. So, or specifically Houston. So I, I definitely agree with you on those points. I, I think that, you know, you, you got your head on right there. No surprise. Um, one of my things, you know, we talked about 35, but time of possession. Mm -hmm. You talk about, you know, starting slow and there's some things like that. 
that I think time of possession is going to be one of the big things that we need to um, we need to be within five minutes. We need to we can be behind, but not like ten minutes behind. So with the Chiefs, it's been proven almost all year that they can score in minutes, one play, two play, three play, four play drives. So I think time of possession. It, it does play a factor in the game, especially with a team like the Niners where they could just kill you with paper cuts with these run plays all game long. But I think that there's a lot more to it with time of possession where the ch- you can lose time of possession and still play an elite level of offense or defense or however you want to dice it. I, I agree. You, you can lose the time of possession. And, and that's what I was saying is that we don't have to win time of possession. The 49ers absolutely need to win time mm-hmm. of possession. But um, for us, I think if we're just, we're not blown out in time of possession, we'll be just fine. So, you know, that's, that's where I'm at with it. And then my last point was just, it's something that I think we've already seen with this team. And I think that's part of the reason why we've got confidence coming in today is they just got to believe baby. It's that attitude they come in with where, you know, we've seen it in other sports teams. We saw it in the Royals in 2014, Mm -hmm. but it's that idea of when you, um, when you put on your uniform and you're standing next to the guy in their uniform and you believe that together you're going to be better and you believe in each other, you believe that, uh, you have the ability to do your job. They're going to do their job. The next guy's going to do their job. When you, when you combine a bunch of guys that believe in the group philosophy and no one's trying to do too much and everyone's just trying to do their part to their fullest and go full speed to that one spot. And then they trust that the other guy behind them is doing their job, man. I think that's it. I think you believe in each other. You believe in your ability. And this team seems sky high I mean, full of confidence. You look back at what they did with the Houston game. And I mean, everybody in their post game press conference made comments about how there was no panic. You know, uh, every yeah. single per, every single player, I think every well, I mean, fan Mahomes on planet earth. Mahomes 24 years old and he sounded like the head coach, you know, like just telling everyone to, you know, believe, do something great. Right. And it's like, and that's, that's the difference to me between teams that um, could be great and teams mm-hmm. that are great. We'll get into the Royals connections here in a minute, but, um, uh, we talked earlier this week about coming up with uh, who we thought was the 10 most important players on the roster. So I want to go ahead and get into that. What did, you came up with a list. I what, got a list what was here. your list? Uh, you know, again, this is different. I didn't want to call it like your favorite or 10 right. best, but it's 10 most important. Who do you think is the key to us being Super Bowl champion at the end of this day? So you absolutely nailed it. This list is not a favorite player list or anything along those lines by any means. This is what I believe is the 10 most important players all season and coming into the Super Bowl. So I start with uh, McCole Hardman. Okay. I think uh, that's that's 10. You're starting at 10. I'm starting at 10. Okay. I think... Uh, By the way, before we get too much farther in the list, let's just go with our number ones on the count of three. One, two, three. Patrick Pat. Mahomes. Yeah. yeah. There's, <laughs> there's no drama yeah, right, there, folks. Right, we don't yeah. have anything no. special. No no twist of surprise. I'm the most important a, player. I'm not throwing ones. a cold quit in there. You <laughs> yeah. Know? I just don't have it in me. Yeah. I yeah. mean, the, the days of chaining MVP for yeah. Dustin Colquitt yeah. are over. <laughs> we don't have to do that anymore. So... All right, so Hardman, that's interesting. Uh, so, starting with the rookie, okay. I'll break that down to my exact point. His ability, He's right up there with one of the fastest men in the league. True. In in this offense, that's Andy Reid's forte is the receiver that runs 4-2. You know, it's, he's proven it year after year. He's had Deshaun Jackson. He's had uh, Macklin. You know, it just goes on and on and on. He likes the sh- – not necessarily short, but he likes the speed. And I think one of the reasons he's one of the more important is because he's the one receiving punts and kickoffs. So it is his responsibility to get the ball from the defense off the field to Pat. He is the the only thing standing in the way of Patrick Mahomes getting that ball back. He touches the ball in two phases of the game. Mm -hmm. So I I got you. I understand him making the list. And he's one of those guys that he's that fly in the ointment for the defense. Like, oh, man, we're these – the the 49ers are so great at defense and like well okay well, who are you going to double how many guys right. are you going to double at a certain you point you're going to be your out of guys so uh, so all right that, i'm with you that's number 10 number 9 damian williams i think okay. he's shown that he's the best running back on the team he's a weapon out of the backfield in the passing game and we've seen it multiple times this year he could break a big one at any minute and 
as a running back in today's game, I think those are about the three biggest as- like features or attributes you can have. He has to be enough of a threat to garner um, their interest. Right. And however that is, whether it's catching the ball out of the backfield, going in motion, those types of things. I mean, that's really in Andy Reid's offense. Um, that That's really – they use him more that way than just a straight-ahead back. But – when he's needed to be a straight ahead back, especially on the goal line in, in both of the playoff games so far, he's delivered and he's mm-hmm. put it in the end zone. And and he's he's run hard when he needed when we needed those short yards. So so I, I, I feel you. I feel I, you. I really don't know how to I mean those two I just feel like there's not a way you make this list without it. Uh number eight might be a shocker. I think uh, Harrison Bucker. Okay. I think he's so I went and looked. He's thirty four of thirty eight this year. Kicking field goals no, every distance. He's 45 of 48 extra points. So, you know, it's not perfect. But so, yeah, I mean, he made my list too. He's just in the 10 spot. Mm-hmm. So I have buttkicker.com coming in at number 10 because, you know, it, hey, it's a very significant possibility that the points he puts on the board is the difference in the game. Exactly. Or, or the points he doesn't put on the board. And we have seen it all across the league the last few years. Kickers are so important. We've seen the double doink. Oh yeah, you no. Know, it's it's you can't. I at this point you have Bucker. He's Pro Bowl talent. And you know what's and, interesting to me about that is that was like the first big move that Veach made when mm-hmm. he came in. Uh, we had a you know Santos got injured and he wasn't able to go, and they went out and got this guy off of I think it was the Panthers practice squad. Yep. I mean that's that was a legit find, and it was the first thing. And it looks like our movie has been stopped automatically. All right, camera reset. Just it just happens. stops. Yeah. Light. Yes. Red light again. So yeah, Brett Brett Veach's first splash uh, as a as a GM was butt kicker, and and I obviously that's paid off. He's been yeah, great. It's been fantastic since you showed up. I mean, first game he had an impact. Um, all right, so your what's that? That's your number seven, right? That's eight. That's eight. I'll get my first five, and then we'll drop to your first five, and we'll just bounce back and forth. That okay. Work. So seven, you might have him higher. You really might. It's Chris Jones. Uh, I have Chris Jones at seven here. Uh, he's. An I got him at nine. Team. Really? Yeah, because we were winning games while he was out with injuries, including and a playoff game. That's exactly where he's, I have him at seven. You know, how are you going to pay this guy next mm-hmm. year when he misses time and we're really almost just as good? I know the guy can be a wrecking ball, but he also was in games when we were terrible against the run. I feel like some of the guys behind him and next to him have really stepped up and handled that run situation mm-hmm. where he's kind of – been you know in a contract year more of a chase a quarterback kind of guy and and I don't know if that's a detriment or not I mean I'm really glad he's wearing a Chiefs uniform today and I'm Absolutely. hoping for big things but yeah that's why I rank him where I am I mean he's in the top 10 out of a 53 man roster he's right. top 10 most mm-hmm. important because he's got that much upside but the downside of not having him in the game we've 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 tr- more than treaded water with him being out so so yeah he doesn't crack any higher than that yeah he, uh, he's I mean he's great at pushing people around you know, that's yeah. when you're a lineman that opened the hole. I, I stood in front of him at, at training camp. And uh, honestly, I was kind of surprised that he wasn't bigger than I thought. He, you know, you think like this guy's a monster. It's right. like, man, he, you know, he's not. He's got that sneaky muscle. He is. He's just he's I mean, he's not a little guy. Don't, don't no, get me wrong no. by any stretch. It's just that, you know, as a the modern defensive tackle, he's big enough, but he's he's quick. Mm-hmm. So. All right, so my six, then we'll jump to John's here. Uh, Honey Badger. I have Honey Badger at six. I think that's too low, man. I think, I was, I think I, he's my number two. He is so, he's the quarterback of the defense, and he is a heart and soul out there. Communication, smarts. He's too smart. Too smart, man. That's you. To me, it's like if Mahomes is your number one, you got a you know quarterback of the offense. Who's the quarterback of the defense? Who's that field general out there that's that's calling blitzes or calling blitzes off and and making sure people are in the right alignment and then just making the play and and he's setting the attitude and everything. So for me, he's he's number two. So well, I'll everybody that I have above him, I have for a reason. Obviously, I wouldn't. 
there's no reason to have him that low. I mean, it's but, the, it's it's not an official list as an opinion right, list, so right. it's okay. To, so, it's okay to be wrong, and at this point, you're wrong. Well, you're just I'm, not wrong wrong. I'm not wrong. I'm not wrong. He is the only other player on the team that's potentially an MVP candidate today, I think. I'll rattle the cage with one of the ones that I haven't mentioned yet, but we'll get into that later. But, yeah, you're right. I mean, he's the utility player. He's the field general. He's third on the team in tackles, leads the team in picks. You know, it's everything you want in a member of your secondary. And it's he's the team leader on that side of the ball. And I, you can't make this list without having a minute. Yeah. It's, well, exactly. And you said it right. You can't name the top important players without mentioning him. And just because we're a couple different slots, you know, different, that's okay. We're both right mm -hmm. with, with buttkicker.com's got to be on the list. We're both right that Tyron Matthew, and we're both right that Priest Mahomes, <laughs> or, or what I say? <laughs> Forget that. Priest Mahomes. Sorry, I'm jumping back and forth between his lists. Father was going, Mahomes. That's, yeah, that's that's a whole other list that we'll get to later. Um, Freudian slip there. But, yeah, um, Mahomes, there's a whole reason that Patrick Mahomes is our number one. So, uh, you know, we're both kind of thinking the same way. So is probably every football analyst, Chiefs fan. It's, you know, it's. I mean, it's. it's it is what it out is. There on the yeah. table, you know. So, so we both have Butt Kicker. We both have Jones. So my eight spot, I got Dan Sorensen. I got Dirty Dan on here in the eight spot. He's been phenomenal in the playoffs. And he's and done he's, everything and he, more. There is nobody on this team that seems to exude. I want this, mm -hmm. um, and I am here to do everything that I can. Like. It's it's that whole like punching above your weight that he's doing right now. Uh, you know, the Honey Badger posted that uh, Twitter picture of him already in in the morning Super yep. Bowl week studying, and that is just man. I tell you what, <laughs> old Dirty Dan's a guy that he will miss three or four plays because he's just not as athletic as the guys he's going up against. But he'll make up for and, it. And every... you're just like, get this bum off the field. And then he shows you that heart, and especially as of late, go, coming in after Juan Thornhill going down, which, bless that dude, man, going through Super Bowl week and being a, you know as a rookie and a starter all year long and getting to the point where you know your team actually makes a Super Bowl and you really don't get to suit up and participate. I know I'm sure he's with the team. I'm sure. I'm not confident. I think he had, he had his surgery already. He's recovering. Everything went well, and I'm not confident because of his surgery he was able to make it to Super Bowl week. Man, I, so, I mean, I, I, mean, I, I hope feel for I hope for somehow they were able to get him get him on a bus on a plane do something and and get him down there even if it's just for today if he didn't Absolutely. come for the whole week. Absolutely. But um, but. In his in his place, the job that Kendall Fuller and Dan Sorensen kind of done covering the middle of the field and taking responsibilities, I actually think those two are going to be the keys to the George Kittle problem today. I don't think people keep talking about, well, you just match up a Honey Badger on him and he'll take care of it. You can't lose that flexibility. That's that's a problem that you can't take out of the quarterback's mind when you're going back and. You're dropping back, and you're you know exactly where Tyron Matthews is going to be. Yep. That's an advantage you can't give away. But I mean, you can say, well, Dan Sorensen is just going to going to grind him at the line, and then he might release, and he might come on a blitz, he might roll out on the back, but he's going to be the guy that's up physical, popping. And he's George made. Kittle, no free releases all day. Dan Sorensen in his face, and then Kendall Fuller is the guy that can pick him up in the secondary. And match up on speed is 40 times actually faster than Kittle's. Kittle's pretty fast for a tight end. Uh, four, five, nine, I think is what I saw today. Well, you know, Kittle Fuller's got that kind of speed. He can keep up with him. So I, I see Dan Sorensen playing up, playing that no free releases, covering the short stuff, but then playing that mm -hmm. where he can be up and cover the back or come on a blitz and, and, and wreak havoc up there. So the only no, disrupt the timing, play with passion, yep. play with smarts, and disrupt mm -hmm. the timing. And that's what I think we're going to see out of Dirty Dan today. Dirty Dan won us a game in Mexico, interception at the last. On the last play there. Yeah, I, so, mean, I mean, it's. I see. He also coming. gave up a play that gave up a touchdown yeah. before yeah. that, and that's what I mean. Is you know the the Give dirty day and yeah. So uh, I, the only reason he doesn't make my list is plain and simply because he didn't start all year. Yeah. I, I took the body of work from the entire season when I made my list. Yeah, and I'm and I'm just thinking you're, today. You're looking at the tip. I'm today. looking today. I'm looking at which which brings me up to my seven and six spots. Giving some love to the uh, giving some love to the offensive line. I got Schwartz at seven and Fisher at six because we saw how not good the offensive line oh, was man. when Fisher was out. Again, part of that's got to be, you know, Mahomes' ankle. It's a different beast when you got a guy who really can't move 
and and the, everything's collapsing around them and it's a different way you handle it whereas now you just got to redirect people and move them by but man i've seen short straight up stand people up oh, on that man, right side been, that guy has been playing out of his mind he's and a wall it's just fantastic and fisher's been doing what they need to do i don't know if these guys are going to be the most dominant run game that and maybe maybe it isn't the tackles that are the key to a run game maybe it's the um maybe it's the guys like the the guards that can pull out and go put a helmet on a guy and having a center i mean austin Ryder, we were able to get him in a when we we're kind of putting a jam when morris left the team uh we weren't able to re-sign him uh we just couldn't you know put that much money into a center but you know we've gone through a couple guys we went through rodney hudson before we've gone through mitch morris for draft drafted him and he's gone and now you know instead of being a drafted guy we got you know a free agent austin Ryder in here and he has done a good job there but maybe it's the between the tackles guys that would help us have more of a dominant running game compared to what we're seeing now but you ask the tackles to take on the bull rush take on those those yeah. high dollar players yep. on the end yep. and man these guys are doing it that's so. yeah earning their money all right well that's my uh what do we got still got to get up to five i'm at five here okay so. so so my i'll go ahead and start on my five so my guy in my fifth spot is frank clark that's, I got him the same spot. I think that if he shows up today and is the Frank Clark that we've seen in the last third of the season and especially in the playoffs, you know, again, the attitude, you can't, you can't underestimate what that type of mentality means in a locker room. I've never been a, oh, locker room and it's in mm -hmm. the mind kind of guy. Like either the guy can run fast and jump high or he can't. But you see there are intangibles to work ethic that puts you over the edge because at this level so many of these guys are big and fast and and once you get that money in your back pocket it's where's that hunger what, what's causing you to work hard and he's got and he's driving. he's got the motor like nothing. and it's it started no. in training camp yes. they they were doing it in training camp and and he was getting in guys faces and 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 forcing them to to be accountable at the very beginning and go all out mm -hmm. in training camp and so yeah he's he's a he is somebody that got beat up by this city and some of the sports talking heads for I was, a while. I was in and that, man. I, the first four weeks, I was, I was looking at it, trying to figure out where, what. So when he was in Seattle, I hadn't heard of him much. They had so many other pieces on that defense that right. were so much higher, higher regarded. An unsung hero at best. And uh, I, when we traded for him, I really didn't know who he was. I'm going to be completely honest with you. In the first four weeks, kind of reiterated why I'd I'm, never I'm, heard of him. I'm, hey, look, I'm the same way. We're, we're doing this in my basement <laughs> with my dogs <laughs> jumping on our, our gallery here, and he's getting some face licks and stuff. Uh, you know, we're... It's yeah. a high motor dog. Just you like know, Rick we don't. We're not spending hundreds of dollars on like subscriptions to Pro Football Focus and studying mm -hmm. numbers and saber metrics and all these different things. We're a couple guys that have our opinion, and we're trying to have a little fun we, with this, and hopefully fun with whoever we, we got. A, to watch we got us. a passion for the Chiefs and the vocal teams. Yeah, and so we're so here to talk the about the fact it. the fact that we didn't know Frank Clark coming in this year. You know, if you want to call that an indictment on us, then that's our bad. But you know, we neither of us did. I just wasn't. I wasn't to throw the baby out with the bathwater yeah, mode yeah. like so many people were. The the I won't name the station and go in on guys, but it was like they're in a rap battle and they're pregnant. Pause is Frank Clark. Mm -hmm. If they didn't have anything to say, they'd just be oh Frank Clark and like it's like oh come on. And so so I, I I feel like we've his attitude right now actually might be partially because the way he was beat up. Oh, and I think and that, that chip on his shoulder, I mean... <laughs> I think some of it's his personality coming out, and I think he's he's amplifying it because he he took so much flack for He took four a lot weeks, of flack. And, he got roasted. And, and you know, to to his credit, he Rotisserie stood there, chicken. He stood there and, and took it, and um, and in the end, he's, uh, he's shown up to be worth the goods, and he's made a lot of people eat their words, and... I've heard a couple of people that, you know, in in the media that at least have come out and been like, I was wrong. This guy's amazing. And and so, you know, that's good to see. I'm I'm glad for his success, um, seeing and now getting to see who he is as a person. The first half of the year he was so quiet. We didn't yeah. know who he was. Well and you mean it was just like this guy that looks like he's given up on tackles and he's not putting yeah. his head in there. Yeah, so moving on moving on to four. Uh so my fourth spot I got Travis Kelsey. That's where I got him too. He's 
He is maybe isn't the, the most. Got some going here. He may not be the most important player on the offense. Um, you know, Pat Mahomes is there, and then who I got right above him in the three spot is Tyreek Hill. That's where I got Tyreek too. And you know, they do so much. Tyreek pushes the field. We saw when Tyreek was hurt, it was that much harder to move the ball. It wasn't yeah, natural. Now good. again, Mahomes' ankle. There's so many things. Everything it's not, happened at the beginning of the year. It's not just because once. one thing. It's a lot of things together. But without Tyreek being in, stretching the field, it really made it easier on defenses. And we saw it like they were playing man. They were playing man coverage and just putting bodies on guys. So Playing one high. And you can't do that with Tyreek. But with then the two of them, the, who works in the best in that space in the bottom? Travis Kelsey. Like, he it, makes the most of those. He, there was a play I saw where he was turning a corner and there was supposed to be a drag route. This is something that uh, Peyton Manning broke down on the ESPN deal he's yeah. got. And it was supposed to be a drag route. He recognized it was zone and instead curled out and sat down in the zone. And, and Mahomes knew he was going to do that and hits him. I mean, that's that's the guy who can work underneath the space that Tyreek creates. So I, I think both of those guys hand in hand is what makes it. I would say you can almost make that 4A, 4B, 3A, 3B, however yeah. you want to split, you know. Yeah, well, you know, there's, you, there's you a You have to there's... game plan for the both of them. And if you game plan to stop Kelsey, you're opening Tyreek up. If you game plan to stop Tyreek, you're opening Kelsey up. So it's pick your poison. And most teams pick Hill. Most, you know, when you look at the body of work we've had this year, it, almost, it almost looks like the one that they've tri- decided to take away in most instances, and especially in both the playoff games, it's been to take Tyreek Hill away. And Sammy Watkins has had some success from that, if you want to go beyond that. Even, Absolutely. You know, and, Absolutely. When you look at Kelsey, I think most of Kelsey's success in that short game is because he doesn't have a safety shadowing him over the top, because or just pick your poison on that. You know, it's absolutely. Just, I I think that you know, we we both recognize and everybody recognizes that you know uh, the benefits of both of those guys create for everyone around them. Right. And and uh, you know if you only have one go to guy on a team, it makes it a lot harder to get off. But when you got like three, four go-to guys, now now it's uh, now it's what a party. do you do? Uh, I have noticed that a lot of teams, the Chiefs, I feel, got smart with this. So the first part of the year, they're worried about giving up the big play and getting burnt, and they didn't commit to pressuring the pocket and pressuring the line. And, and they said, well, we're getting beat a slow death. We'd rather die a quick death and get mm-hmm. the ball back and have a chance to answer, right? Than just keep getting dealt slow death after slow death. And so they they really converted to a team that pressured the line of scrimmage, made it tough yards for the running back, and didn't give up anything quick. Like we saw at the very beginning of the uh, Texans game, you know, hey, when you're that aggressive to the line, you get one miscommunication or slip, and a guy can burn you deep. But then again, you know, it's it's a it's a quick quick burn. It's a quick burn, and you get that ball back, and you get a chance to answer. And you, you play with, with the other team that with, time of possession. With the offense that we have, you can afford one of those every now and then. You know, it's the defense and doesn't have to be perfect. Plus, what's the lower percentage play? A uh, running back getting six yards against a soft line and a cover three? Um, or is it the chance of the quarterback standing in the pocket, getting something deep with pressure, with guys right. in their face? That's- and, and he's got to make the throw. You, you got to make the throw, and you got to make the catch. It's just a, it's a, yeah. You might get burnt. You know, it might cost you, but it's a lower percentage play, and the better percentage is focus on that line. And I think that's, you know, that was the key to beating Tom Brady with yeah. what they did, um, what Steve Spagnuolo did with the Giants back in the whatever the eighteen and one season is. Is he put somebody in Brady's face and took away that that you know. Randy Moss wasn't going to be as big a weapon because he didn't have time didn't have to run time down either. the dang field. So, I, you know, I think I think we're both kind of in agreement about the way the Chiefs need to handle today, just like they've been handling it the second half of the season where we've seen good results, and, and it makes sense. So. so moving on to two. I'm going to shock you with this one, I feel like. I got Eric Fisher at two. Okay. And you, you got on some of where I was going to go with well, it. Well, we saw the difference with and without. Exactly. Exactly. So, I, and, you know, you, he was you, a number one overall draft pick that was like, are we going to get it? He was a right tackle that then converted to left tackle. But it turns out, yeah, dude's, dude's he, pretty he, legit. Yeah. He's not as bad as everybody says he is. And he's taken a lot of heat over his time in Kansas City. 
and he missed however many weeks this year. It was three, four. It, I mean, it, I think it was more than that, but yeah, it was – it was he had that core muscle surgery and he was out and this team was out like it mm. was it was not where it needed to be um you know i liked some of the backups that we we had in on the offensive line to start the year but you know cam irving didn't work out as well as i you know really had in my mind like oh yeah we'll get it's that guy yeah, he can play just... anywhere on the line like he can be mediocre anywhere on the line but he can't be great anywhere um and of course, so that line, you know, you look at where we're at now with Wisniewski in there. Like, you know, yeah, we, got, we got other guys that, again, we'll I want to give him a shout out real quick because every game I've been to this year, he's been the extra lineman for nearly the entire season. And I have never seen a player on the sideline prepare for his moment as much as he does. He spends the entire offensive set, uh, every drive, on, he may be even on the bike on defense. I haven't paid close enough attention to that but he is ready to go in when his his number gets called well and that's, that's all you can ask uh, that's what that's what seems to be the key for a brett beach kind of guy is it seems to be somebody who who's hungry and he's like as long as you are hungry you can be here and i hate to say it because we all experienced the patriot way once before with scott pioli but that always seemed to be the deal that it didn't matter quite the talent of guys for the Patriots. It was, are you hungry? Of course, that was backed up by, you know, Tom Brady and Gronkowski and, you know, Randy Moss for a little bit. Like, there, there's there been some real talent up there. Um, and, and so it's like you need hungry guys around them to want to come to work every day to help, you know, pull their part of the rope. And not a bunch of high price guys that maybe you're being a little lazy. You got to have your, your key players, your key positions. But they absolutely, I mean, it was is, I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a football he, family, a football guy. And he came in, you thought, like, well, this is just a guy that might get a couple of snaps yeah, or something. He was, he's been an anchor. He's been the, he was the sixth man on the line and he earned his way. It's been great. You know, it's, it's been great having him here. Glad he's achieved. So, uh, so we got done with our, our first list. Um, I just want to get to a couple of parallels, and maybe I kind of maybe we planned ahead and put this at the beginning because I kind of keyed on it before. But the parallels between this year's Chiefs team and the Royals team that we saw in '14 and '15, there's some things. It's just like you hear Alex Gordon even talk about like getting goosebumps with some yeah, of the things with yeah. his team, with how the 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 fire the belief like you see that moment so i look at the texans game now this team obviously believed in itself and it's perfect that it's the texans game because the astros you know in 2015 was that same it was it was we're not going home we're not going home we believe in us and even going back to 14 to the wild card game where they learned in that game to to believe in themselves and and then i even kind of thought of another parallel when Tyree Kill, you know, muffed that uh, the punt, that to me was one of those, or I guess it was a kickoff. Um, no, it was a punt. It was a punt. Uh, I I was very angry, and I don't remember a lot at that time. So <laughs> if uh, I recall, I did hear a story about how you tried to kick a ball through a window. Yeah, right? and then threw my glasses and all sorts of things. It was it was a it was, it was not a good time. It, yeah, not not a fond memory in my life. Those first uh, you know 12, 15 minutes of that game, but. Um, you know, it was one of those moments where it was like putting your Donald Ventura in in that wild card game yeah. when he comes in out of the bullpen and something he's not done for a long time and they would, don't know if he's even used to. Yeah. And he comes in and it, not that your Donald Ventura isn't great, not that he isn't a key to us winning the World Series and doing what we did, but in that role, it just the moment it, he wasn't in it. And, and 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 it was the same thing. You put Tyreek in, and you're thinking like. Oh, here we go. We're getting too cute. We're thinking too much as in the coaching staff. And yet, in the end, is the same result. The team yeah, said, yeah. I got you. Yep. We're, we're fighting through it. And, it. and same with both with Tyreek Hill came back firing, and your Dono Ventura was not put down at all with that. He didn't. That it Some was, other uh, players, that could have ruined their career. And if, instead, he was like, you know, a little fire in his ass. Nobody so. talked about it enough, but Ventura did go out and throw like a three-hitter the next game in L.A. It was game two, I believe. Yeah. And he I, came out was, and came back with that mindset of it, that, that was done, that's in the past, and 
Yeah, so Tyreek came out with that same deal where it's done, it's in the past, went to the sideline, regrouped, and I just I just see so many things. It's so crazy, and also that getting so close and yet oh so far yeah. and having to come back the next year. I just hope that with this roster, the way the NFL is versus Major League Baseball and some of those things that that we don't see this team kind of fall apart within the next couple of years once you have to decide to sign contracts. I know we're in that Mahomes rookie deal, and and things have been good in being able to sign people and keep them here, but I, I just, I'm just i hoping that we don't um, – don't experience that same like well we got a bargain shop again yeah. and and we start losing people and i'll so. even one up you with a couple more of those uh comparisons um i'm not saying alex gordon by any means is patrick mahomes but in 2015 I mean, he, he we, most certainly is not well, <laughs> i mean he does have all these gold gloves and and i for the was, life of me I, I feel like i've watched a lot of Royals games and it's you know it's like Lorenzo Cain is the guy that I always like. That's defense. But there were so many more players on that team that are higher regard. But <laughs> yeah. from the face of the franchise, it was Alex Gordon. And in 2015, he had that groin injury running into the wall. Yep. And there, there was some panic. I yep. think there were many people that were like, well, this could be it for us if he's done for the year. Mm-hmm. And it was the same thing, the Patrick Mahomes Most kneecap. Me. Oh, was, so many people panicked. Oh, oh my man. God, they panicked. They were, they were like, like, oh, he's got to get his knee to- cut off. Oh, we're going to, you know. I like, was looking at the way he somebody was Somebody take my leg. leg. Pat, have my leg. It I was, was looking oh at the God, way he was man. holding his leg in that moment, and I thought he broke his leg. I didn't think it was the knee, like the initial cameras yeah, had him hold the leg up in the air. It wasn't full on Joe Theismann, Alex Smith no. look, but it was definitely like, oh, that ain't good. Yeah, I knew, um, everyone knew immediately. But when he, was, when he walked off the field then, like without really assistance after a minute, you just had to be like, okay, let's let's yeah, be realistic let's breathe, here. Let's breathe. Take, take a breath. And the... But I, I mean, again, listening to sports talk radio in the city, you had so many people that were just like, well, they should just shut him down. We can't risk the long term. It's like, guys, he was diagnosed with a dislocated patella that was put in place immediately. Yeah. The only thing we that has to have points point. when the camera's off, just so you guys know. Um, <laughs> but I got, I got one more comparison for you, and it's, again, the comparison's just... It's eerie. For, for the... For the purpose of comparing the two teams, I'm not comparing Ned Yost to Andy Reid, but Andy Reid had that phenomenal career in Philadelphia. Everyone mm-hmm. knows all about that. Ned Yost, not so much, but they both just couldn't get over the hump couldn't and made hump, mistakes yeah. along the way, mm-hmm. and that's the reason that they both lost jobs in their previous position. Yeah. And Andy Reid is now on the verge of getting his trophy, and Ned Yost came to the next place and got his trophy. And, and you got to feel that, you know, despite how today plays out, that with the roster they have and the pieces in place and Patrick Mahomes, that, that Andy's going to have a couple more chances. Like, it ain't over even if today isn't exactly the, what we're hoping. I I just think that, that Andy's – it's hard to imagine. you got to think about this as a key to life, all of us, you know, that – how long a road Andy freaking Reed has been down to get to today. And, Everybody's and it's cheering his for age him. and everything that you're just like, you know, I'm sitting here at 41 years old sometimes going like, oh, man, all these things I couldn't get in my life just passed me by. Like, man, ain't nothing passed you by. Except, you know, the where the scale said like 250, <laughs> 275, 299. All those passed me by. But otherwise, hey, just like Andy Reid, all those yeah, numbers yeah, passed those, him those numbers passed him too. But, you know, it just, man, it's something that really shows you, like, you just, whatever you enjoy doing, do it and keep doing it. And eventually the good things come with it. And, I, and, and I hopefully today's the day that he gets he gets to put the cherry on top of that Sunday. Right with that, he's been everywhere. Everybody knows Andy Reid. Everybody's got Andy Reid's coaching tree. Is, yeah, it's, it's it's legendary, and everyone's cheering for the guy. And Alshon Jeffrey, I saw, is going to the Super Bowl today as a Chiefs fan because he wants Andy wow. Reid to get his get his due. You know, <laughs> it's just can't remember who was who was the wide receiver that they brought in. Oh, Jason Avant. Yeah, they had the yeah. Jason Avant song. It was like <laughs> Jason Avant. Oh my God. Mm. There's so many people that you know that, that are 
yeah, are part of the Andy Reid family, players that played for him that just love that guy. And, and so, it, you know, as a fan, it kind of tells you all you need to know. Right. When you got a bunch of people, like there are a bunch of players that played for um, uh, uh, Todd Haley that just hate his guts. And, you know, I never thought that poorly of Todd, but the dude did steal a stove out of a rental house. Like, that did happen. I think there's a little more to that story. I think everyone can look at that and be like, well, I'm sure they paid for the stove. And then we're like, no, that's, that's ours. We're taking it with us. But, the, you know, wasn't the deal, whatever it is. Still, for it seems a little petty. Um, and Andy Reid doesn't have those stories. Andy no. Reid seems to be that character for days kind of guy. He's probably that, paid for all of his barbecue. That's, yeah, let's yeah. Just talk he's he's bought other people's stoves just as long as he <laughs> yeah. And I, you know, I'm here. You know, we that's the fun thing about Super Bowl. We got two weeks where no one's talking about anything but your teams, and you're hearing all sorts of new stuff. And find out Andy Reid's a great cook, which I mean that doesn't seem like a surprise. But where does the dude have the time? Apparently, right. he'll he'll whip you up about anything. You so, know. His uh, quote of the week was, uh, I don't have the exact quote in front of me, but when he compared his grandkids to uh, sweet and sour pork, I don't know if you saw that one. But that, I've, that was... I've heard some sweet and sour pork comments. I did not know the origins. So. Yes, he uh, right. compared being a grandfather to uh, the best of times and the worst of times because it shows your age. One of these days we'll upgrade mm -hmm. to a producer that can put that stuff up right. on the screen. Yeah, as of right. right now, we're we're not at that point, but that's all right. We just got a camera guy for the first time. Yeah, so. we got we got a we got an official button pusher and a camera that won't stay on more past four gigs because of. of tariff laws that's brilliant mm -hmm. uh, all right so i want to go ahead and jump on to our next thing try to to be fun for a minute here man this again we've seen all this super bowl coverage we've heard all these new things we've heard about andy reed and sweet and sour pork what has been your biggest pet peeve of super bowl coverage so far my biggest pet peeve is all these talking heads talking about what a complete team the 49ers are. They're such a complete team. Last I looked, we had 53 men on our it's, roster, the same as they did. And if I, you look at the whole year, the depth that we've done to get a bye and get to the Super Bowl with all the injuries, including a quarterback. It's there impressive. is not more complete team than the Kansas City Chiefs. I'm sorry. You might say that the starting 11 – and maybe yeah, 22, you, you know, if you want to go person to person on that part. But as far as full team that I think that's just Steven Wisniewski standing on the sideline, yeah. getting ready for his moment, that's this team is a complete team. I'm so tired of hearing that. I think it's a lot closer on both sides than anybody thinks. Everybody's – we already talked about Except how, for Jimmy Garoppolo versus Patrick well, Holmes. I think that one's pretty clear. There are some very clear differences in these two teams. But I think across the board – they're a lot – I mean, you don't get to the Super Bowl by accident. No. But you don't – you don't do you, you don't do professional football by accident either. I mean, every everybody – you know, you look at what the uh, the Dolphins did this year, and they were kind of a laughing stock and that were giving up and trading people away and all this stuff that was going on. Or they even put it together late and, in the And they did. They were all, I mean, it's it's the National Football League, man. And so to, to act like that one team is just stocked with pro football players and the other team doesn't have – you know, but a couple superstars is such a joke. It and is, it's because it they is. really don't have that much. They're trying to talk up why the 49ers are going to be good. In my mind, it's a, it's a cop-out. Well, they're a complete team. I've never known. What, what is an incomplete team? Playing, so, there's, well, been, there's been plays this year where we've I had think we can players find on some the field. incomplete teams in NFL we, we, history. We've, we've, had, we've had snaps this year with only 10 guys on defense. Yeah. That would be an incomplete team. So I guess Tyler Palco you know, was a starting quarterback at one point. I mean, so, you, know, you know, but he... Some, Tyler Palco beat people out in camp. That's the thing you got to yeah, that, like That's That's what's actually kind of scary. You know, that, that's there. when you've got to just consider not coming back next year. You know, I, yeah, it's, when it's. I look, when you I, watch that guy throw a knuckleball to this. I, I was a Matt Castle believer early on, and it just, the bottom fell out. Like, he seemed like somebody who came in with the right skills. And it's the same thing, you know, they, they believe Tyler Palco was going to do something that he just wasn't capable of. Um, you know, but again, I just he did win buzz, a game. Super Bowl buzz he did win a game. So Super Shout Bowl buzz seven nothing in Chicago. <laughs> yeah, Never forget. Oh boy, I can't even remember. Like we had games that were blacked out on TV and oh, all yeah. that. It's, oh gracious. Um, and it, so another another thing though, um, as far as pet peeves, is everything that they they talk about with the 49ers. 
Um, they talk about defense and you know how how good they are on defense. We've actually as bad as we were on defense early in the come year. Come a long ways. Well, we we actually have allowed fewer points than they have. So it's like, well, y'all are just talking about this because you know it, it's your it's your thing. Dash, <laughs> we have, we have a dog is, that loves beer in the house. Yeah, so. he, he's he's chasing it and shaking the camera. Uh, we. We have seen uh, we've seen a defense for the Chiefs that's much improved over the second half, and so if you look at the complete season and just look at stats again, I'm going to pay for Pro Football Focus and take all my talking points. The the 49ers have a great defense. I'm not saying their defense is trash. Obviously, they have a great defense, but don't turn your nose up at what the Chiefs have done in the second half of the year after getting used to a new system, new players, and new and then, defensive coordinators. You could contribute it's, it's been a wonderful all turnaround, year. and they have put up numbers better than the 49ers. And you can contribute a lot of that, too. It was just a new system, new players. You know, it was – I don't even know where to go from there with that. You know, it's pretty cut dry with – it takes a minute whenever you're getting anything new, you know. It's, you got to learn it. You got to learn the system. You got to learn who you're playing next to. It's we we talked about that before as far as the the idea that you um, have to believe in that guy next to you right. and know that they're running to their spot and that you're running to your spot. Man, that faith takes a while. And that that communication takes a little bit. And it, it's it's something that us as fans and people that are you know have to fill airtime, which you know, hey, we're we're in the basement, you know, it ain't, we don't have to fill anything. We can prepare our thoughts and come out once a year, you know, and, and do something. Um, so I get it. You gotta you know talk about something, but but yeah, I don't think I, I think people aren't giving our defense enough credit for how far they've come, and, and it just it takes a while. And that man, they got there. It is it's it impressive is, to it see. So I want to go ahead and jump on to um, to our favorite list. We'll try to make this a little quicker than, yeah. than our most important. So I'm just going to go ahead and rattle off my from 10 to 1, my 10, 10 favorite players of all time for the Chiefs. Now, I'm going to give a little bit of um, – I did not put on players that I know were amazing Chiefs all times. Yeah, Guys I'm, immediately come to mind like Otis Taylor. Because again, this is about my favorite. That's and people exactly I grew right up with. From too. And so I do have in the number six spot, I've got Lynn Dawson on there, who's the only one of these players that I didn't watch play. But Lenny the Cool has been a part of Kansas City, and you Long didn't, he, you know, he was, you know, sports broadcaster and all these things where. He's got the only Super Bowl. Yeah. To, and hopefully until today, he's the only Super Bowl winning quarterback that the Chiefs have ever had. And so, you know, he's been such a fabric of Kansas City that even though you didn't watch him play, he was part of your life. So he made my list. But otherwise, don't think I'm leaving people off that I know were, were you know, guys like Buck Buchanan and, oh, I, I man. Say I've there's, got, there's I've amazing, got similar. I got autographs on my ambassador's poster over there, Bobby Bell, guys in the Hall of Fame, you know, like, it's just these are my favorite because of who I grew up watching. So at 10, I got Nick Lowry because, man, how many games did I grow up watching Nick Lowry win at kicking field goals? Like, he was he was the, the, the butt kicker.com yeah, at that time in. where it was just like, just move the ball to get Nick Lowry a chance of the kick right. and we'll win the game. And that was back when it's three yards in a cloud of dust and, and play good defense and, and kick the ball. And yeah. The touchdowns were were bonus stuff. You know, right. you took your shot when you could get them, but you made sure to get three. Um, that was sure a different game back then. Oh, uh, it was it was a good game, but you know, yeah, guys coming across the middle and, and trying to decapitate people <laughs> like we don't really do that anymore. It does seem like kind of a bad idea. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, in my ninth spot, I put Tony Gonzalez, and it was a little bit of a struggle for me to put him on the list because I'm a I am one of the butt hurt few or many about some of his comments and about him leaving and and you know there's I the person who's second on my list also left the team and he went out and got a ring and so I had to put myself like back in in like when I was watching games was there anybody else that I was happier was wearing a Chiefs uniform when we were going, you know, nine and zero to start the year yeah, in two thousand three, yeah. Tony Gonzalez was part of the peanut butter to the jelly, and and you can't take away your enjoyment of watching those teams without realizing Tony Gonzalez was a part of it. I mean, and pre, so I think if we if we had our business ages, today, he was the good times. It, yeah, and you know, he was that one superstar that was on your team when you had teams that maybe didn't have that many. And so I think if we can win today and seeing how he's really tried to be, um, you know, recently. I 
think he realized he kind of put his foot in his mouth with the people that we need to we need to grow up and move on and forgive and that there's you know, somebody that should get a ring maybe as part of you know you know a complimentary ring yeah. My mom's here, folks. See, I'm not in my mom's basement. I'm in mine. She came to my house to watch a game. Just so y'all know, the basement does not mean hers. I own this basement, um, or my wife owns the basement. You can have the argument. I won that on the record, just so she knows I love it. Um, so yeah, I, I got Jamal I'm just Charles. So I don't get fined. Yeah, I got I got Jamal Charles because again, you know, talk about the good times. It's kind of sucked to have the injuries that he's had and to not be able to do more with a talent like that. But but Jamal Charles is number eight of favorite players. Above that, another running back, number seven, Priest Holmes. Talk about you know that that bright flash of time that we had where you had Tony Gonzalez and Priest Holmes and that offensive line. Like you know you really thought that there was something's going to happen there. Unfortunately, you know concussions. Yeah, which, like, we talked about the game limited. change, and that's one of the reasons yeah. why. Um, Lenny the Cool at number six. I already talked about him. Then I got Travis Kelsey at number five because nobody makes you you know. Look at the sign here. Like even Sprint made up fight for your right because that's how much we love the yeah. attitude and the fun. And it, watching Travis Kelsey play football makes watching more fun because he's fun and he loves what he does. And so, you know, we're just we got to keep rolling with with uh, with Travis Kelsey. And, and I, I'm looking forward to. Heaven forbid! I'm looking forward to seeing Miami burn tonight with all the parties. That, that there won't be no Charles dolphins Kelsey come Monday morning. Uh, number four, I got Mahomes. I put him fourth on the spot because I really tried not to be prisoner of a moment. I look forward to him moving more up the list as we get through more yeah. years of his career. But you know, he, he's up. We've got, there. We'll have more Super Bowls down the road to move him up in the rankings. Absolutely. So. But then, you know, your childhood is your childhood. And so my top three is Christian Okoye, Neil Smith, and the number one, Derek Thomas. Yeah. And so for me, watching Christian, the Nigeria nightmare. So I'm sorry, that is like the best that's, freaking that's a fantastic name, nickname, nickname in, in pro football history. And there's so many fantastic. But for my childhood, there'll just never be anyone yeah. that, I, you know. And then his story about being a track star that came over here and then was like, what's football? I thought that was soccer. You know, and he went to college where nobody had heard of. Oh, you know, the yeah. story is... And just, it's crazy. And he seems like such a loving guy and, and warm guy. And so I'm just so happy that he was a chief. Um, and then, you know, Neil Smith, like I said, it kind of hurts that he, he left to go get a ring somewhere else. But I guess at a certain point, you got to do what you got to do. And, you know, I forgave him way faster than I gave Tony, which is why I'm trying to, you know, yeah. give myself some realization there. And then Derek Thomas, you know, we, we miss him. It's, you know, hate that we lost him so soon. But that was the guy. When I got my first Chiefs jersey, it was a 5'8". You know, that's what it was. It said Thomas mm -hmm. across the back. So, again, childhood, you know, of course, you know, same thing with, with Neil Smith, man, going back in the Neil nose where he had the, yeah. the breathe right yep. strips before those were even a, hardly a thing. I think, you know, it was just a, I don't even know, we'd tape over it and paint it with glitter. Like, we didn't, that guy was so bad that he put glitter on his face for a football game and nobody hated him. No, no. So, to me, that's that's my that's my favorite Chiefs of all time. Let's let's hear what you got. So here. that segues well for me. So keep in mind, John and I are not very close in age here. So I grew up in a very different era. So he was talking about his childhood, and most of these players I have seen play, except for I don't recall seeing much Derek Thomas back in the day. Yeah, I'm, that I'm, was, I'm like child of the '80s and grew up in the '90s. You're child of the '90s and grew up in the right. The, in the aughts. And uh, so I've got a 10A, 10B of Christian Okoye, Derek Thomas, just because, you know, I, yeah, it was those are the two before. players I would have loved to have seen play. Yeah. And I never got the chance. So without further ado, we get into the whole uh, grew up in the 2000s where things went all over the place. Trick Green at nine. For a long time, that was the best quarterback we'd had in town yeah. in my lifetime. So it's hard it's hard to not have that as a... My favorite, uh, my favorite Trent Green joke of all time, though, is how do you spell Trent Green? T-R capital I-N-T. Yeah, well, it wasn't the greatest of times, but he did win us a few... Uh, come close to winning us a playoff game that one time. That one all was all defenses. Yeah, that was the, the no so, punt game. It was, yeah. That was crazy. So uh, uh, we go to eight, Tony Gonzalez. I think you had him at eight too. Um, you know, I just grew up watching him, and I, I'm a little bitter as well. 
I think uh, he could have handled that better and didn't. At seven, you left him off your list. I got Alex Smith. Okay. I was really critical of Alex Smith the entire time he was in Kansas City, but the way that he left, it's hard. It, he was such a good guy, and that's that's not football reasons to like a guy, but he was the gap between the worst of times and the best of times, and he just kept us float. When you when you want to talk about you need somebody to write the ship. I don't think that he came in when with we, ship when we when sunk. we yeah like he came in with the bail they they were kind of like hey come bring your bucket and he yeah. did and he showed up with the bucket and he righted the ship and and then also what he did mentoring um, Pat Mahomes for his first year that's something that wasn't that, asked of him it, it wasn't asked of him and those guys are still tight like they yeah. again with the expanded Super Bowl coverage we hear all this stuff and we find out that the the um, uh, the stuff that they really still connect with each other. They still are fans of each other. They still watch each other's game tapes. Like it, it's when we go back and look at what's important in Chiefs history. If we go on a run here, we we got to remember what Alex did for us. So I'm, gets, I'm glad he, he's not on my list, but I'm glad he's on yours. You pointed it out. He gets my honorary Super Bowl ring. You, okay. gave, you gave one out too. Alex okay. Smith gets my honorary Super Bowl ring. I got we, you. We give those out. Hey, you know what? For so, everything he's been through, he deserves it. And right. He, he, you know what? They do an X-ray. He might have one in that leg of his. I don't <laughs> know. So, Probably got enough metal in there to make one. Yeah, so. we'll smelt it down and make him another one. At uh, six, I got Charles. Okay. Uh, five, Derek Johnson. Another one you left off your list. I did. He but, was but, uh, uh, yeah, he again, was the anchor of a defense for a gotta, long time. Yeah, when you got to leave people off, it's it's the age difference. Right. I feel you. Yeah, Derek Johnson, and then uh, if you got Tomba on there, I wouldn't be surprised. I don't have Tomba because uh, to me, it's kind of the same thing. Like Derek Johnson, and Tomba Holly were both like, I mean, you know, chief through and through. So so four, I got Pat. Same thing you said. It's going to move up. In yeah, time. don't be don't be prisoner of the moment. Yeah. Just you know, make him number one, even so, though we know that he's headed there with a bullet. Dante Hall at three. Ooh, nice. That was uh, the X Factor. The 2003 run is something that I will. You know, they, they created the X Factor Gatorade off of him, and it's yeah. still there. Yeah. Like, they still make it. It doesn't say Dante Hall anywhere on it, but the X Factor Gatorade is delicious. I still, still, when I'm bored, I'll sometimes like I'll still go back and watch that uh, kick return where he pretty much jukes the entire Denver defense. Yeah. You know, I still watch that one from time to time. Uh, we go to two, Eric Berry. Okay. That's uh, I just loved Barry for yeah, a long time. Yeah, no, and, and his his story is great. And you know, coming back from leukemia and all the stuff that that he dealt with. Um, or sorry, not leukemia, it's lymphoma. Yeah, it's right? lymphoma. It's B cell lymphoma, yeah. I think. Um, but you know, came he, back one oh, player, uh, defensive player of the year. Didn't he win that one too? You know, I, I don't recall, but still, it, regardless whether he did or didn't, he, he yeah, played great, incredibly, and he just ended up with that heel injury that yeah. just was one of those things that there's not really recovering from. It's just it's going to be weird when he comes back next year in a different jersey. He wants to come back, so if he gets his chance, it's I don't know. Be real he will. I know enough enough docs that kind of told me that like like I knowing what we're hearing about it, like he might be done, and it well, might not be. You know, he as a football player, he I'm sure he feels that if he can get his mind right, he can play through anything that's pain. Yeah. But I'm sorry, when something in your foot hurts and you can't push off and you can't do things, you're not as, even if your mind is in it, you're just not going to be as good an athlete as you need to be at this level. So well, he's, he's going to give it a whirl, so yeah. we'll, we'll see. I'm we'll sure see. someone will take a take a flyer on hey, it. Hey, you know, maybe he's healed up. Maybe he found a treatment or something that worked, or maybe just got some, some scar tissue stuff to, to release and... Yeah, good on him if he's able to come back. So. And then number one, you mentioned your first jersey was the five eight. Mine was the three one of Priest Holmes. Yeah. So it's you know Priest. it's uh, I grew up in uh, that perfect time frame where he pretty much ruled the world. All right. So. Well, so before we wrap this up, I want to ask one question. Then off of your list, who is the person that you would want to put on this year's roster? For improvements or just for the ring? Because we talked about how Alex Smith gets no, the ring. No, not, so. no honorary. Like you want them in their prime on this team. Stack, stack list. Obviously, you know we're talking about our favorite players weren't like just because oh he's a hard luck guy and he's my fa he's my buddy. No, these were amazing players. But who helps this team the most? You know, at some point in the year it could have been Eric Berry, but Dirty Dan has come in, kind of earned his place there, and I'm not sure Eric Berry would have. He wouldn't have had as many bad moments, but right. as a whole, I don't think he's the one. And I think running back is just the spot where it's 
too tough to beat there. Uh, you can make an argument for Derek Johnson. So I think you either go Christian Okoye, Jamal Charles, or Priest Holmes. I, I go Priest Holmes. I, that's, I think you know, that's it, a little it, personal. I got you. It, off my list, I put Jamal in. Yeah. I think Jamal Charles in this offense, a prime Jamal Charles, with another track star speedster out there, catching the ball out of the backfield, the motion stuff yeah. that you could do. Oh, my goodness. Can you imagine? And, you know, again, it's if we were more of a, a three yards on a cloud of dust kind of team, and you wanted to bring in somebody to get those, or if we couldn't get in the goal line, like Damian Williams has punched the ball. He's done in. fine. And so I feel like while Priest is an amazing running back and we both really like him, um, I just think that in this offense, Jamal Charles is the guy. Good. I mean, you can, most. outside of probably Trent Green, you know, I don't think that he can do much. There's, there's, yeah, everybody but else on this that, list. I really think you could make Alex Smith probably close. Well, and even if we're just talking do. about, if we're, even if we're just talking about depth, adding depth to the yeah. roster. So, you know, it'd be fun to watch Tony Gonzalez right alongside Kelsey. You could make arguments for any of that. All right. Well, we're going to wrap this thing up. We've been at it for about an hour here talking about stuff, getting ready for the game. It's actually been the fastest an hour has gone for today. Everything else has been oh, riding man. completely slowly. You have slowly. no idea. So before we get out of here, I need your prediction. What's the score? All right. So I, f I had a whole big old prediction thing ready to roll here, but I'll give it a brief version. I think it's going to be a lot closer than people realize. We've heard people talk about blowouts on both sides all week. And I think at halftime, the Chiefs are losing. Okay. And I think everybody in Kansas City is going to be about ready to go outside and burn a couch at that point. And, uh, very, very specific thing. If you're at my house, please don't burn a couch. <laughs> I'll find something a little less uh, personal. Um, but I think the second half is going to be a light show. I think, okay. it'll, I think it'll be a low-scoring first half. In the second half, everybody goes to the locker room and they give the keys to Pat. There's some adjustments to get yeah, made. Yeah, so. I think uh, that's how it's going to be. And it's going to be a one-score game with two-minute warning. Well, even Jimmy G is going to have the ball. Even if it's and not. And he's going to fall apart. Okay. And the Chiefs are going to win at 38-31. Well, 38-31 is, is uh So take about, the over when you're yeah, in, in I, the betting world. Yeah, so we, we're, we're going to kind of blow off prop bets because we've been at, at this for a minute. But that was going to be just – the early over being at 54, I would have taken that all day long. Yeah, oh, yeah I, I think uh, I got it 35-24 uh, um, Chiefs. Um, I, it's kind of interesting. You talk about halftime adjustments and, and the Chiefs lighten it up. In the last two games, we've actually slowed it down in the second half, but we've, we've had been, enough of a lead that you've seen the teams are getting out of character, and I think that we're going to see that happen again where um, – it's Jimmy Garoppolo is going to have to push it, and it's again we talked about the percentage plays. Make them make the low percentage yeah. plays, and they just aren't going to make as many of them as Pat is, and that's it just is, it. I just don't have faith in Jimmy G in a clutch moment here. I, no, I, I think uh, Honey Badger picks him off, and that's the dagger. I'm going that specific with it. Yeah. So that's our predictions. There's our show uh, to get out of here. You know, Mitch Holthus always comes up with some type of call. You know, it's it's. We're going to hear him all the time, and he pre-writes them, and sometimes it seems a little contrived to me, and other times it's just absolutely amazing. I always like the off-the-cuff stuff a little bit more than his prepared script yeah. at the end of a game. But to me, if my call, if I'm watching this at the end of it, I think it's ground blow drops back. That was it over the middle. Passing complete, broken up by the Honey Badger, and that does it. The Chiefs have become world champions yet again. Kansas City, how you doing? Bring home the trophy. I dig it. I dig right. it. 50 years of waiting. Let's hope it happens. Thanks for watching. Thanks for staying tuned this long. If you did, probably the only people did is us two laughing at ourselves, yeah. but that's okay. We had, we'll have a good memory to look back to, hopefully for many years, of our first Super Bowl and our lifetimes with the Chiefs. So thanks so much. And how about those Chiefs? Like it.